This is Ivory. <laughs> she smiled. Mm. What's up, YouTube? It's Adora Mermaid. Um, this is my first YouTube video ever. Um, today, I'm talking about my labor and delivery story. Also, slash whatever, how I induced my own labor because I did induce my own labor. <sighs> I'm out of breath. All right. <laughs> okay, so first things first. Um, I induced my own labor using castor oil. Um, just a disclaimer, no, I'm not a medical professional. So with that being said, um, use it at your own risk. Um, castor oil is basically just like a laxative. It's supposed to like stimulate your bowel movement um, well, while also helping labor progress or however you want to put it. Basically, you go to the bathroom and then you're supposed to go into labor right after that or hours later it helps stimulate contractions and stuff like that basically um my experience was a little bit different um i'll get into that a little bit later um but yeah so um i had my baby december 16th um at 10 29 p.m so i woke up that morning i went to go get breakfast um well, not really breakfast because I had to go later, but whatever. But yeah, I woke up that morning. I went to go get something to eat because I really didn't want to like drink the cash oil on an empty stomach um, or take the cash oil on an empty stomach. So I went to Chipotle. Now that I think about it, um, that was kind of a bad idea because, you know, Chipotle don't always do the right things for you in the bathroom. But um, it didn't really end up being a bad thing. So... What happened was, what had happened was, went to Chipotle, went to Walgreens to pick up the castor oil. I took mines with um, orange juice that we already had in the house. So, you feel me? It wasn't that hard. I just need to go buy the castor oil. So, I went to go get the castor oil, came home. I ate the food. It took me a while to drink the castor oil, not because I didn't want to drink it, but because I was just kind of stalling to be honest like procrastinating because i heard that it was like very nasty um everybody says it was nasty um their faces while they were drinking it were like disgusting and the way people were doing it they were like mixing it inside of their drink i knew that i didn't want to do it that way because it was like mixing oil and liquid and it just wasn't mixing it then now i got a whole cup of oil and orange juice to drink like that just didn't make sense to me so the way i drunk it was i put it on a spoon um the biggest well not the biggest spoon i had in my house but like a regular tablespoon that i had in my house and i just drunk it and then as soon as i took the tablespoon i washed it down with the orange juice like immediately like i didn't even waste some time i swallowed grabbed a cup of orange juice and drunk it so once i took the castor oil nothing happened like i just was chilling basically like nothing happened i didn't go to the bathroom and i was kind of like shocked like i waited a few hours um to see if i would go to the restroom and i just didn't so i assumed that it didn't work because i wasn't going to the bathroom um because you're supposed to basically poop and your girl wasn't pooping. I thought I was maybe constipated or something. But I'm like, why am I constipated if I just took a laxative? So the goal was, I said to myself, all right, cool. I'm going to go take a nap. If nothing happens when I wake up, then I'll take two more tablespoons. Because you can take up to four tablespoons of the castor oil. I had only taken two. So I took the castor oil at 1.33 in the afternoon. I went to sleep around three something maybe i took a nap woke up around six something now when i woke up um i was feeling like these little 
the best way I can describe them was like kind of like Braxton Hicks contractions because they weren't strong, but they weren't like, I don't know how to describe it. Like they weren't strong enough for me to like rush to the hospital, but I just knew that it felt a little bit different than Braxton Hicks contractions. So I called my friend up and I'm like, hey, like, how did it feel when you have contractions? And she was like, well, you'll know. And I had already started timing it. So it was around like 6.50. I had pressed the timer because I kind of wanted to just know what was going on, basically. Like, if these are contractions, I want to be able to tell the hospital when I call um, how long they were, how long, um, how far apart they were, how close together they were, or whatever the case may be. I just wanted to know. So I pressed the timer and I um, was just keeping track of it. Now, my friends on the phone, because once I pressed the timer, they were like a minute apart at like I say like 20 seconds at a minute apart they just were very like I said not like a little bit stronger than Braxton Hicks but not too serious and she's on the phone she's like I don't think those are contractions because they're already a minute apart and you just started like that just might be Braxton Hicks that you're feeling so I'm like you know what all right bet I hopped in the shower just in case because if they were contractions that they were to get stronger I just knew that I would already want to be clean, take a shower, and ready to go to the hospital as soon as possible. So, hopped in the shower. I'm on the phone with her still in the shower. And I'm noticing, like, hold on. They're getting stronger. So, it took me a minute to try to, like, feel it out. Because, like I said, they were a minute apart, but they weren't that intense yet. So, my mind is just like, mm. Maybe I'm just like messing with my head. Like maybe I'm just going crazy a little bit. Maybe I'm just, I wanna feel it, so I'm feeling it. Like I just didn't know what was going on. So got out the shower. They were starting to slow down, not much. Like they went from one minute apart to two minutes to three minutes apart. And then I got out the shower, my mom came home. So as soon as she came through the door, I said, hey, I'm having contractions, but I wanna wait about an hour just to see if they continue. My mom's like, all right, cool. I'm gonna take me a nap. I'm gonna start cooking the food. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that within that hour. I'm like, all right, bet, yeah, do what you gotta do. I can wait, you feel me? Because it wasn't that intense. Listen. So by the time my hour that I had wanted to wait was over, my mom comes out of her room and she's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna just start cooking. I'm gonna take me a nap. At that point, my contractions had got way more intense than they were when I was in the shower, when I had first woken up. From when I called my friend, it got worse, like to the point where I was barely taking it, okay? so. Um, I was like leaning over chairs in the kitchen. I'm like leaning over. I have like this exercise ball. I'm all bouncing on that, trying to like calm down. Because again, like I still didn't know. <laughs> basically, like I didn't want to go to the hospital for a false alarm, basically. So um, when I was in the kitchen, I felt like a pop in my stomach. Like that's the best way I can describe it. Like something in my stomach, I felt something like a different feeling basically like either I knew it wasn't a baby kick because it didn't feel like a kick and it was nowhere near her feet or hands or whatever the case may be so um right when I felt like that pop or that like that drop in my stomach I went to the restroom when I went to the restroom I sat on the toilet as soon as I sat on the toilet a gush of water came out and I was just so confused because I'm like now I know I did not just pee like nothing came out of my you feel me like i did not just pee i just sat down i know i ain't pee that quick i did not have to use the bathroom that bad and when i looked in the toilet it was like clear and cloudy um and i'm just like that's not pee like that's definitely not pee so i called my mom i'm like mom i think my water just broke and she's like, uh, do you see any blood? I'm like, no. She was like, oh, well, you're fine. I don't think that's your water. So I'm still in the bathroom looking at the toilet. Like, that's not pee. 
and then I peed right after that so I'm like okay that definitely wasn't pee and right when that happened the contractions went from it was already from 0 to 10 it went from 10 to like 500 and like two minutes tops or whatever so my mom she came out again and was like I'm gonna take a quick nap I yelled so hard and was like I turned into a demon I'm like no, no God, please, you're not no, going to the hospital no. I grabbed my bag I put it in the car barely making it to the car because contraction got so bad and then we rushed to the hospital so I called my child's father at first I told him I was like um hey I'm having contractions but don't rush yet because he had just got off of work probably just got home or whatever and I'm like don't don't rush like yeah they're bad but don't rush yet <laughs> and this is like when we just got on the expressway so I'm like hey you're fine um I'm having contractions just be ready to come to the hospital by the time I got to the next exit I called him back and was like bring your ass to the hospital this baby about to come now so he's rushing to the hospital I'm rushing to the hospital I'm in the car going crazy because there's nowhere like for me to go basically so i'm having these like intense contractions with nowhere to go and it was just very like uncomfortable like i'm literally grabbing on the chair like leaning back like on my mom's chair leaning over in her ear yelling screaming and it's so weird because the way they describe contractions is exactly how it is like while you're having the contraction it hurts like a like a bitch like i'm not gonna it hurts like hell but once it stops, it's like everything's fine. Like <laughs> I'm like smiling, laughing, talking. But as soon as it starts up again, I turn back into a demon. Like, nah, get me to the hospital. So I get to the hospital around 8.45. Mind you, I left the house around 8.15ish or something like that. Um, it's a, like a 20 to 30 minute drive from the hospital to, from, the, from my house to the hospital is around like a 20 to 30 minute drive. So I get there around 8.45. They, um, check me in to triage so while i'm in triage okay my contractions were like i keep saying intense at first i wanted like a natural labor no epidural at all but i never said that i did not want pain medicine okay never said that I get to the hospital, I ain't get no pain medicine. Like, and I tapped out. My contractions were so bad, I tapped out for epidural. Only because I'm like, nah, if this is what I'm feeling and I just got here, I'm gonna let y'all know now that I want the epidural so y'all can go ahead and mix it up for me, get it ready for me so that when, I, when I'm ready for it, you feel me? Like, when it's time, I can go ahead and get it, get it over with, but that was one of my biggest fears was getting epidural. But once I felt that pain, <laughs> I, I did not care, you feel me? So, get to the hospital, they check me in, and the ladies, like, they're coming in and out, they hook me up to the monitors, of course my baby is moving, she's like, balling up on me, like, I will try to insert videos if I can, mind you, I'm new to YouTube, so if I can't insert videos, I'm sorry, you know, me. I'll try next time. Um, but yeah, my baby... Yeah, my baby is balling up on a monitor so they can't get a good um 
like they can't really monitor her that good my contractions are very 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 bad so i keep moving so my contractions like they couldn't really monitor those either so i guess because they really didn't get a good picture of how my contractions were how intense they were they just kind of either they overlooked it or they just really didn't care i don't well i'm not gonna say they didn't care but it just wasn't something that was like a sense of urgency because i kept moving so the contractions paper is like all type of spaces and like just breaks and like pauses and stuff like that because they kept coming in to fix it my baby keeps knocking it off track so it just was all over the place and i could not stay still so it was very hard to try to keep track of it basically um but every time the lady came in, I'm asking her, I'm like, yo, I need y'all to give me the epidural. Like, I want it now. Or give me something for pain. They coming in, they taking blood from me. Um, and I'm just like, all right, y'all doing all of this. Where's my medicine? You know? So from the time they check me, I say about like 10 to 15 minutes later, maybe even 20 minutes later, they moved me into my delivery room. So we're going into the delivery room. On the way there, I don't know if it's because I was like in motion, my contractions kind of calmed down for like that quick second, I think. And then as soon as I got back in the room, started right back up. So I'm in the room and my mom's with me. I have my child's father with me. Um, and I'm just kind of like, at one point I think I cried because I kept asking for epidural and I felt like nobody was like, really listening to me I felt like because they thought or because when they checked me I was three centimeters they felt as if like you're fine like you have time to get that epidural like we're not gonna rush to give it to you because you're only three centimeters blah 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 so by the time I get in the room it's around 9 45 9 35 like something around that area i didn't really have my phone at this point like i wasn't worried about my phone i wasn't worried about really much of anything once my child's father got there um and my mom was there uh she had to step out of triage because there's only one person could be in there but once she got back to the room i was delivering in um i really didn't care about like my phone or anything else plus i was in major pain so fuck the phone like so by the time I got into the delivery room, it's around 9.35. I would say that's when things turned up like a lot for me because I'm in the bed and like I'm crying my eyes out because I keep asking for medicine and everyone's just like coming in and out. I had to tell them to check me again because they got like, if I didn't think they were worse before, they got worse like once I got to the delivery room. I don't know what it was about the delivery room, but that's when it turned up on me for real. So I'm in there and I'm asking them, I'm, sorry. I'm like, yo, where's my medicine? Where's the epidural? I want medicine, I want epidural. Everyone's like, yeah, okay, it's coming. You have time. And at one point, like I told them again, I'm like, yo, check me now, like right now. The lady checked me again. At that point, I was five to six centimeters, mind you. The first time she checked me, it was only like a small gap in between from when she first checked me. And she checked me again, I was like five to six. And I, she told me that she was like, we can't keep checking you because it can make things worse or something like that. But the pressure that I was feeling, I, was, I wanted her to keep checking me because I didn't want to push. And that's what I felt like I had to do. So I kept asking her to check me so that I could know like, or basically remind myself like don't push because you're not 10 centimeters so if you push you can fuck up a lot of shit in your body so i kept asking her to check me plus i wanted them to see how fast i was progressing because everyone act like i just had all the time in the world and my body was telling me that i did not have all the time in the world so she checked me again i was five to six centimeters and that's when at that point like once she told me five to six centimeters i looked at my nurse and i'm like yo screw the epidural can you give me something for pain because i and i literally calmed myself down and i told her i said i do not want to get to the point where i have to push without any medicine at all little did i know so she's like yeah okay it's coming from the time she said yes yeah, coming my doctor walks in the door 
like looking at me i'm looking at him and i'm like i want medicine he looks at me there's no time they checked me again i was like eight to nine centimeters and that was like 10 minutes later only they only checked me again after telling me that they weren't gonna check me is because i started to yell out that i have to poop like that's the it's legit a feeling like you have to poop and that's what i was yelling out at that time because i just felt as if like mm -hmm, something ain't feeling right like i felt a lot of pressure i had liquid coming out like my water bag had um broken more um i guess it did break when i was at home but my water had broken more um and when the lady checked me i don't know if it's because she had a bigger hand but <laughs> when she checked me her hand came out and it was just like she held it up like this it was just a whole bunch of like blood and like clear fluids like my i think I, my water bag was like in her hand basically and she was like oh you're ruptured i didn't give a fuck about being ruptured at that point i was pushing and i'm being completely honest like i couldn't i don't know why they tell you like don't push you can't control that shit you can't hold it you can't control it like once your body is emotional pushing you can squeeze back or something like that but there's no way to stop pushing basically especially when well for me my body it wouldn't let me so oh, shit. all right so mind you while she checked me and like her my water bag is in her hand my doctor and his nurses are like in the background getting their gloves on getting scrubbed in i have somebody on the side of me putting my legs up putting the bed up and at this point i'm panicking because i'm like hold the hell on where's my medicine like i asked this lady for medicine since i first walked since i first walked in and i still have yet to get any so i'm like panicking the nurse is like on the side of me i look at her and i'm like you lied to me all of y'all lied to me like i'm in there like cursing these people out like we're well, not like rudely but just like panicking because i'm like all oh, y'all lied to me y'all told me the medicine was on the way like didn't this negro come in talk about it ain't no time and by the time like from the time she last checked me from the time i started pushing it was like 10 minutes later so while they're getting scrubbed in i'm in the bed literally yelling out i'm pushing i have to poop because they were taking too long y'all motherfuckers want to play all right bet i'm gonna push and y'all somebody better come catch my baby simple as that so i'm in the bed pushing all everybody is like no don't wait like give us a second my doctor comes over i don't know why he thought that or like what he thought this was he looks at me he's like oh we're going to do three practice pushes i look at him like practice no this baby is coming now so from the time he came in said that or whatever those three pushes he talked about were the three pushes that got my baby out. I pushed for literally 10 minutes. Like, from the last time she checked me, it was at least, I think I mentioned this, but it was like, I don't know, like 10, 20. My baby came at 10, 29. Like, I literally had my baby within three pushes. And I kind of like get emotional. Well, not really, but like... I think the sad part about it was that I was so like in pain and like emotionally like just out of it um that I didn't like once my baby came out I was exhausted like I didn't touch her well I touched her like once I think I looked at her a little bit um I watched him cut the umbilical cord um like everything that they were doing afterwards I literally passed out like I didn't pass out like blanked out but I was so exhausted that I was damn near asleep after I, once she came out it was such a relief like I can't even explain it so um I didn't really get to do skin to skin time um like I just kind of laid there I didn't have oh I didn't tear but he did like do a little cut a little bit so while he was sewing me up I was just literally laying there I think at one point I kind of looked over because they I guess they kind of saw that I wasn't um that responsive to my baby so 
they kind of took her to go get her cleaned up and stuff like that and then he just stitched me up and then I kind of looked over made sure she was okay I asked about her and then after that I just fell asleep to be honest like they did whatever they did I think I just, I just woke up with like a pad on some mesh underwear and the next time I woke up she was like okay you have to go to the bathroom and I'm like I bet like I didn't know what was going on I didn't even know that they had took her to the um little NICU or not NICU um wherever they take the babies to to get cleaned up and to do whatever they do I didn't even know they took her there um my mom and my child's father was there so I really wasn't much of any help in that moment to be honest so so with that story being said this is Ivory <laughs> she smiled this is Ivory hey mom for me at least I don't know about y'all but it worked for me um so yeah overall my labor was only about a good 45 minutes from the time I got to the hospital or from the time that I got checked from the time that I actually pushed um less than an hour all thanks to the castor oil now I didn't think that the laxative works because I didn't poop um at all so I really did not th like I thought that it was ineffective um, because everybody that I saw on YouTube doing it, uh, they pooped and I didn't. So I was just really confused. But here's my sweet baby. It looks beautiful. See you all in the next video. See me a baby in the next